So I got five meters of this lightweight woven houndstooth fabric from my local craft store. And then I got about two meters of this interfacing. So I'm using a Vogue sewing pattern and I measure up my body measurement to figure out what size I want to make this. So I figured since it's a winter thing, I want it to be, you know, a bit comfy, but not exactly tight and snug as you do with, you know, other dresses and shirts and stuff. So I figure out what size I'm going to make it, cut out the pattern sizes for that, and I just basically cut. So when you buy a fabric, it tells you how wide it is, and from the pattern, you can see how to organize the pattern pieces according to how wide your fabric is. It's really easy to do because you don't waste a lot of fabric, and you buy exactly how much you need to make this piece. So while I'm doing this, I'm just making sure I've got it folded on the right, I mean the wrong side of the fabric, because it's really hard to tell with this fabric. It was just... The right and wrong look really similar, but you could tell that the wrong side was a little bit more fuzzy-ish because there's like a knit woven, but like I think I almost blinded myself. Like I literally could not tell at some points while I was doing this what was the right and wrong side. So I make sure to transfer all the notches and like information from the pattern onto the fabric, but once again it was pretty hard to do because I couldn't see my black ink or my black and white fabric. So while I was doing these initial pieces, I think I did not fit them the right way because when I was doing the bigger pieces, I barely had enough fabric to finish. I was literally on the corner of the fabric and I was kind of going crazy because I still had two more little pieces to cut out on the fold of this part of the fabric and it was just, I didn't know where to do it and I was kind of going crazy. But then I realized my biggest issue was that I cut too much of the pattern since I was making the middle size of this cape, not the biggest one. So I actually had a lot of leftover fabric to make some of the other pieces. For the collar, they wanted me to cut on the center fold and from the diagram, I didn't really know what that meant. It just looked a bit weird, but then I got the pattern piece and figured I'll just use the excess fabric from the other pieces and I just kind of folded it on it and saw what it was supposed to look like from the diagram. And I kind of just pinned it and figured out how I would make this into that big long thing, which essentially literally just meant folding it and creating the symmetrical part of the whole piece. So the pattern I'm using is from Vogue V92 A to A. It's got some complicated glossary terms as well as a lot of instructions. It's like I think 37 instruction steps. Uh... So I almost forgot about interfacing. This is the first time I've actually done interfacing for any sewing project or anything. So it came with instructions. Um, I literally just have to cut it and iron it on. It got really annoying because I had to cut out basically the patterns again, but just for a few pieces. So the instructions on the pattern piece tell you how much of the fabric and how much of the interfacing to cut. So basically the piece was made of two pieces of interfacing and then two pieces of fabric. So for the first step of the stitching, they want me to ba basically baste around the corner of the both of the pocket pieces. I um, generally do this for curved edges just to make sure it doesn't warp while you're stitching other things to it and it just maintains its you know, curved shape and stuff. They also want me to do a narrow hem in the top part of the pocket pieces. I have no idea what that is so I'm probably going to have to google that. Then I pretty much watched a YouTube tutorial from Professor Pincushion how to narrow hem because not like I know how to do that. And it literally just means folding the seam allowance in and pressing that and then basically opening that and then folding it half of that again and then pressing that, pinning it and then stitching it. So it's a little bit complicated but I understand what they mean by a narrow hem because it actually does become a narrow hem so, and it looks really, it looks like a really clean way to finish the raw edge. So after I pinned them down, I stitched them and they actually turned out really well. So I was quite happy with how neat they looked and they kind of didn't, they didn't look as amateur as I thought they would. Cheese break! Then I pinned down the pockets on the right side of the fabric, so that front pinnacle piece. And then I pretty much stay stitched the curved part of the front. And this is what happens when you try to make a coat on a beginner's sewing machine. <laughs> so the pockets are stitched onto that front piece and now it's time to do the collar. So I grab the collar pieces and on the wrong side of the fabric I'm just pinning them together and because they're on a curve they want you to cut and trim parts that are just popping out from like, the wrong side. After that, start on the long pieces that form the part where the buttons go on and they want you to use a finish um, on these long pieces. So I just decided to turn it in 6mm and then just finish it because I don't have an overlocker. So 
Then I grabbed these finished long pieces and attached them to the interface side of one of the collar pieces and stitched them all together onto that pocket piece. Now it's time to work with the big boy, so I grabbed these massive pieces and they're pretty self-explanatory because I've got these edges notched. So I just connect the notches that need to be connected together and I just go ahead and do a really basic running stitch in my sewing machine down these edges. Next I go ahead and start on these like label parts of the coat, so these are the buttons I believe go on I remember so they are just basically folding the pattern in half and then their interface was a bit difficult to keep them down so she's pins to do that I sewed them I trimmed the rest and then I just folded it out and pressed it so I've got two of these completed pieces I'm reading the instructions and I'm just hmm. I literally have no idea what I'm doing so I was really confused if I was pinning these pieces the right way, but they turned out alright. And then I just sewed them all together. Just a lot of layers, so it was a little bit hard. I think I broke a few pins. So these long pieces of the cape were really annoying because they were so long and then I had to pin them down, I think, on top of those like little pieces that we just did before. And it was just a lot of fabric to get through with the pins and I couldn't imagine how I was going to sew this with my machine because I have a really super beginner machine, like it was like $100. And I'm pretty sure I broke so many needles doing this part and like continuing on just this part because everything just got thicker and you know harder and I was just like Loki dying. This is what we have so far, so I've got that top piece with the pockets and little collar thing and facings and then I have this main big part that goes around the back. And then I just slip stitch the long inner facing of the cape to the shoulder seam. Then they want me to do some stay stitching on the collar side of the cape, but I can't even see what the collar is at this point. So for the collar pieces, I'm just attaching them together as well as trimming the excess after I sew it, and then basically just turn that inside out. After that, I also top stitched all around the collar edges. Then I had to figure out how to place the collar on this curved neck seam. So I just pretty much went around really slowly and pinned everything all together. So I have to be really careful and only just through that one part of the collar, not both edges down, because the other side is going to be slip stitched um, onto the cape and that won't be visible from the outside. So far the collar looks great from the outside and all I need to do is just finish off this so by doing this seam, it's going to hide the internal um, seam line of the wrong side of the fabric. So the collar not only acts as a collar, but also hides some part of the stitching. After I do that, I just do a little bit of an edge stitch on the top of the seam from the right side, just underneath the collar. To finish up the bottom of the cape, I'm going to pin the interfacing on the, with the wrong side showing to the front. And I'm pinning that down and just sewing just that part of the interfacing from the bottom. And this is basically a needle graveyard. So I basically sew from the seam allowance down to the interfacing, trimmed the excess off, but I accidentally trimmed off like double what I needed from the bottom, so it was too much cut off. But after I turned it inside out, I just had to figure out a new way to hem this from the bottom. So you can see where I pretty much made that mistake, uh, it's just way too much and this is what it should look like. So I ended up cutting it all to the same level which is way too short so I had to re-stitch the interfacing part, re-trim everything and then just do a narrow hem and it actually turned out okay, thank god. And I forgot to transfer the information about button holes from the pattern onto my fabric so I had to literally put the pattern on top of my fabric and like weirdly mark them from underneath and it was really annoying I never went that again. So before I actually started sewing on top of my fabric I used a little like scrap piece of fabric just to see how I would start doing buttonholes from my sewing machine because I've never really done it before for an actual finished project and it turned out pretty okay. 
On my actual fabric, I use a ruler and an air raising marker to make sure my lines were the right amount of slant because they're not exactly straight. They're going down the side of the coat, sorry, cape, not coat. And then I just use the button to hold like stitches that come with the sewing machine already. So like that one, two, three, four method. For opening up the button holes, I use a seam ripper to just make little tiny holes and then I use my Stanley knife to just get a little bit more weaker at the fabric than scissors just to open up the whole thing as properly as I could. So some of my um, button placements were actually not on top of the right part of the fabric they needed to be, so I had to take that away with water and then redo them. At this point I'm not too happy with my front facings because they look a bit grungo still, like I haven't cut them properly and I don't think this stitch at the right length either and that's all down to the fact that I think when I was cutting the pieces out in the very beginning um, when I was going around a curve I just cut like sometimes you warp the scissors and they just cut like two or three centimeters more than you need in this case it looks like five centimeters so I just trimmed that all down and I was like low-key crying because it was across seams and it was just awful but it had to be done otherwise it would not be the same measurement so I reopened the hem and I redid the narrow hem and it was finally finished and I never want to do it ever again so getting towards finishing this, I have to edge stitch or top stitch, I forgot which one it was, it was either of the two, and just all the way down, and my needle was breaking again because it was going through like, what was it, like four or five layers of this light knit fabric. So I got 10 of these buttons from Link Craft, I should have gotten 11 because I actually cracked one and I was like practicing how to sew buttons. So they've got the four holes with me, I have to sew them twice across horizontally. To figure out the button placement, because I did this wrong in the beginning, I had to put the top part on top of the bottom part and then put my marker through the holes to figure out exactly where the buttons needed to be. And then my sewing machine didn't work, so I had to hand sew this entire side. Basically killed me, I didn't want to do it, it was just so tedious, but the final product looked really, really good. So I just kept going and the button placement is not exact, but it got the job done. So after the buttons are on, all that's left to do is the belt. The belt was really straightforward, it was just a really long rectangle piece that had to be sewn obviously from the inside out and then pull that in and then leave that whole slip stitch, that hole and it was pretty much done. I think after sewing like the more complicated parts of this, like those like facing and shoulder seams and hand stitching and all that, it was just a real relief to have to do something so easy and just like, okay, sew this inside out done. Like that's, it was just, I'm really happy that the belt was last. I couldn't really think of any other way to pull this out other than with my hands, like a loop turner, would that work? Something this thick? Like I know we can use it for thin strap, but this was just really annoying on my nails, but it, it got the job done, so... After this final slip stitch, I just ironed it out, um, just made sure the belt was fine, and it was pretty much finished. 